hearing, worshiping in the temple, and being engaged in the service of the Lord. So when a person feels transcendental bliss, that is relishing the mellow. That is called relishing the mellow. To be more clear, we may understand that the various feelings of happiness derived from discharging devotional service may be termed the mellows of devotional service. The very first symptom, way back in the beginning, I think it was chapter 2 or chapter 3 of, oh yeah, maybe it was even chapter 1, yeah, here it is. Right in the beginning of chapter 1 of Nectar of Devotion, he says, the six characteristics of pure devotional service are, one, pure devotional service brings immediate re relief from all kinds of material distress. Two, pure devotional service is the beginning of all auspiciousness. And three, pure devotional service automatically puts one in transcendental pleasure. See? So if you're not there yet, then you're not ready to relish bhava. You're not ready to relish rasa. Okay? Be honest. If you're not there, if you're not past the stage of an art and vritti, you can't relish this rasa. You can relish some preliminary taste. Huh? This is called rasa bhasa, the reflection of rasa. And there's two kinds of reflections of rasa. You remember those terms? One was pratibimba rasa bhasa. No, well, it was pratibimba nama bhasa. And what was the other one? Anyway, one is called a shadow, and the other is called a reflection. Okay? Just like there's a shadow of the holy name and a reflection of the holy name. Uh, the reflection of the holy name is when one's chanting is pure, but he has not gotten to the stage of full realization yet. The shadow of the holy name is when one's chanting is offensive. Similarly, when one is in the offensive stage of devotional service, he may relish some tastes, but they're going to be uh, like perverted. They're going to be mixed with inharmonious states. Okay, just like I was explaining earlier, there might be some devotee who, who rises very high in the hierarchy of the temple or something like that, but he's still attached to his position. He's still attached to the different perks of being, you know, a big, big devotee. So, yeah, he may, he must have some taste, or he wouldn't be able to do so much service. But on the other hand, if he's attached to some material position or designation, that means that taste is is not pure. Okay, so that means he's uh, in the offensive stage. He's not tasting pure rasa. But then there is the reflection of rasa, uh, rasa abhas in the sense of the reflection of rasa, that when one reaches the, the proper understanding of devotional service, then he can begin to see the reflection of pure devotional service in the taste that he gets from his devotional service activities. Uh, just like uh, I, I like to tell people that when I moved into the temple, within two weeks of moving into the temple, I knew that my taste was conjugal love. Uh, there was absolutely no doubt in my mind that was my taste. That is not to say that I had realized that taste. That's not to say that I was pure. Heck, I was still smoking cigarettes, sneaking out of the temple. Yeah, <laughs> but I knew, I already knew that that was my taste. How do you explain that? Well, that is pratibimba rasa bhas, the reflection of the actual rasa that one has, okay? And you can see this reflection, I think I've discussed this several times, you can see this reflection in your everyday activities, and especially in your activities in devotional service, 
like what your preferences are, what you get the most enjoyment out of, and so on and so forth. You can, you can see this mood if you're sensitive to those things. So this is the beginning. This education in, in Rasa Tattva is the uh, beginning of that developing that sensitivity, that aesthetic sensitivity to the flavor of our love for Krishna. So anyway, this relishing of transcendental mellow in discharging devotional service cannot be experienced by all classes of men because this sweet loving mood is developed only from one's previous life's activities or by the association of unalloyed devotees. As explained above, association with pure devotees is the beginning of faith in devotional service. So as soon as I decided to accept Srila Prabhupada's association and moved into the temple, then immediately I could begin to taste these things. Uh, and actually this happens to all devotees, but usually they don't have the sensitivity uh, to be able to observe these things and, you know, and note them. Only by developing such faith in the association of a pure devotee or by hearing or excuse me, by having in one's previous life executed devotional activities, can one actually relish the mellow of devotional service. In other words, this transcendental bliss is not to be enjoyed by any common man unless he is so extraordinarily fortunate as to be in association with devotees or to be continuing his previous births devotional activities. I recall so many instances in India of going into temples, you know, especially during Kirtan. Uh, you know, I traveled a lot all over India and in many places and especially holy places like Dwarka and like that, up in Gujarat, you know, or in Rajasthan, uh, going into temples during Kirtan and seeing perfectly ordinary people that you wouldn't think anything about if you saw them on the street and see them in states of ecstasy chanting the holy name. Well, now these aren't brahmanas, they're not big, big scholars, they don't have any position in these temples, they're not like, you know, trying to make a name and fame out of their devotional service. They're just simple, ordinary people. But you can see, I mean, you can just see in their faces, they're so blissed out just by chanting the holy name. Uh, this is the wonderful thing about being in India. There's so many nice devotees like this. And they're everywhere. You never know, you know. And so uh, I always caution my disciples, when we're in India, you have to be very, very careful not to offend anyone. Because you never know this person could be a pure devotee. It's very hard to tell by external activity or external appearance. Because just like we are, you know, when we travel and like that, we don't make a big thing out of being devotees, you know. It's not like we confront everybody we meet with the fact that we're devotees, you know. Um, only when we're preaching do we actually, you know, directly manifest. And people can tell, oh, there's something different about those guys, you know. <laughs> wonder what it is. Hmm. But we don't make a big thing out of, out of manifesting it in public. Similarly, these, uh, these devotees, these advanced devotees in India, they don't make a big thing out of being devotees. That's just who they are. And they don't need to try to make a big impression or anything. So be careful when you go to India. Uh, uh, even the, the little urchins on the street begging for paisa, you know, in the railway stations, don't offend them. Especially if you're in a holy place. They could be great devotees, you never know. Okay. The gradual process of development to the stage of devotional service is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. The beginning is to hear about Lord Krishna in the association of devotees who have themselves cleansed their hearts by association. Hearing about the transcendental activities of the Lord will result in one's feeling transcendental bliss always. Well, that's what we're doing right now. We're hearing about all these topics. 
It is also explained in Bhagavad Gita that for one who has actually come to the spiritual platform, the first symptom visible will be that he is always joyful. Huh? You know that verse? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochitina Kangshati. Huh? Brahma Bhuta means that one is situated on the stage of spiritual existence. Prasan Atma. Atma means soul. And Prasan means joyful. So he's Prasan Atma. He's always joyful. Na Sochati, Na Kangshati. He's not desiring or lamenting. Huh? Desiring means. I want it, but I don't have it. Lamenting means I had it, but I lost it. <laughs> oh, I have it, and I don't like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Or I have it, and I don't like it. Yeah. So when people are lamenting, it means they're in a condition of desire. 